a leak suggests that Gemini Ultra is coming this week and that the Bard name is going away. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Well, here is a big one that we are kicking off with. It appears that Google is planning to launch Gemini Ultra this week, and they're consolidating their brands around the Gemini term. So for those of you who don't remember, when Google announced its long-awaited Gemini model in December, we didn't get the most powerful version, the version that they said actually beat GPT-4. That was called Gemini Ultra. And while there was some grumbling that Google did its sort of announce a future thing without giving it to you thing, while Google did the thing where it announced something that you don't actually have access to, by and large, people have just been waiting to see how good Ultra actually is. Well, a couple days ago, Android developer Dylan Rosal writes, Google added a new changelog for Bard, and oh boy, it's a big one. The changelog reads, 2-7-2024, Bard is now Gemini. What? Gemini is the best way to get direct access to Google AI. All the collaborative capabilities you know and love are still here and will keep getting better in the Gemini era. We've also evolved the UI to reduce visual distractions, improve legibility, and simplify the navigation. Why? We're committed to giving everyone direct access to Google AI, and as of this week, every Gemini user across our supported countries and languages has access to Google's best family of AI models. To better reflect this commitment, we've renamed Bard to Gemini. Next bullet, try Gemini Advanced to access Google's most capable AI model, Ultra 1.0. Gemini Advanced gives you access to our most capable AI model, Ultra 1.0. If you want to be one of the first to access Google's latest AI advancements as they become available, this is for you. With our Ultra 1.0 model, Gemini Advanced is far more capable at highly complex tasks like coding, logical reasoning, following nuanced instructions, and creative collaboration. Plus, Gemini Advanced will continue to expand with new and exclusive features in the coming months, including expanded multimodal capabilities, even better coding features, as well as the ability to upload and more deeply analyze files, documents, data, and more. Now, it does appear that Gemini Advanced will be a paid plan as opposed to a free plan, similar to the distinction between GPT-3.5 and GPT-4. There's also a Gemini app coming. Now, again, according to Google's own reporting, Gemini Ultra beats GPT-4 in things like the MMLU, in reasoning tests, in math tests, and coding tests. And it appears that as of a couple days from now, we will actually get to be able to test this out ourselves. Now, in the meantime, one of the things that you might have experienced with ChatGPT last month at the end of last year was that it seemed to get, for lack of a better word, lazy in December. There was a whole discussion and debate around whether the LLM might have determined that December is a slower time of year, generally speaking, for work, and so was similarly shifting into a down gear. There was some evidence for that, although it was never proven or anything. But in any case, Sam Altman has said that GPT-4 is not as lazy as it once was. He tweeted tongue-in-cheekly yesterday, GPT-4 had a slow start on its New Year's resolutions, but should now be much less lazy. Now, what exactly they did to improve GPT-4's laziness was not revealed, but certainly for anyone who has been frustrated over the last couple months, this will come as a welcome announcement. Now, one more interesting thing in the competitive set. As you've heard on this show, Meta is increasingly talking like they want Llama 3 to be competitive and state-of-the-art, not just for open-source models, but for models in general. Zuckerberg said literally that when he made an announcement about their AI strategy a couple of weeks ago. Well, Andrew Curran pulls something pretty interesting from last week's earnings call, where he writes, It was instantly overshadowed after the stock went hyperbolic, but during the earnings call, Mark Zuckerberg mentioned that the gargantuan trove of public data that they have amassed from Facebook and Instagram to train Llama 3 exceeds the common crawl, so in excess of 6.4 petabytes. The exact pull quote from the transcript was this. Zuckerberg says, now, the next key part of our playbook is learning from unique data and feedback loops in our products. When people think about data, they typically think about the corpus that you might use to train a model up front. And on Facebook and Instagram, there are hundreds of billions of publicly shared images and tens of billions of public videos, which we estimate is greater than the common crawl data set. Now, Zuckerberg also went on to say that even more important than the upfront training corpus is the ability to, quote, establish the right feedback loops with hundreds of millions of people interacting with AI services across our products, but still I thought it was an interesting note on just how much data this company has access to when they're thinking about how they make Llama 3 state-of-the-art. There was also an interesting chart that Brian Romley pointed out that shows a dramatic shift in Meta's stock price, seemingly corresponding with the beginning of their focus on AI and open source at the beginning of 2023. Now, of course, there is a correlation causation thing, as 2022 was in general a brutal year with the fastest tightening cycle in Fed history, but still, it is interesting to note. 
Now, one interesting one in the open source world, speaking of that, OpenAI's custom GPT builder has some competition. Tech lead and LLMs at Hugging Face, Philip Schmidt, says, Introducing Hugging Chat Assistant. Build your own personal assistant in Hugging Face Chat in two clicks. Similar to OpenAI GPTs, you can now create custom versions of Hugging Face Chat. An assistant is defined by name, avatar, and description, any available open LLM like Llama 2 or Mixtral, custom system message to control the behavior, and different message starters. So this really is very similar to an open source version of the custom GPT builders, in that in many ways, the point of it appears to be giving people the ability to create a saved prompt structure for common workflows that they use over and over again. In other words, I think that in many ways, the use cases of these GPTs, despite there being a store, tends to be pretty personal and just time-saving by giving people the ability to recall without having to reprompt based on some previous effort. Still, I think it's a really cool thing to see more GPT-like builders, and I'm excited to try it out. I will almost certainly be doing so for our AI education beta, which continues to go on right now. However, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.